What's going on? My name is Jay and in this video I want to show you how you can use a public API to get data and do whatever you want with it. And this API I'm so happy because it's going to be fun for me. It's called Poke API. You can go to pokeapi.co and we can get any Pokemon and all the data from that Pokemon and do whatever we want with it. I think there's people out there making games with this data. So you can see here that they're giving us the URL. They're giving us every single endpoint that we need to get that specific data. And here you can see so simple Pokemon, Pikachu, and then here you get everything from that Pokemon. So I'm going to keep it simple and I'm just going to get the name and image, maybe the height and the weight. Let me see if we can, you can see the height here and the weight is somewhere. And then the ID, which is something that I'm going to use in our code. So I'm going to be using a lot of modern JavaScript to get this done. So let's close this. And here it is. Here is my website is empty right now. Um, you can see the body is empty. We have some CSS already. And you can see here my CSS file. Um, we're going to see how it looks later. My JavaScript file is empty. So let's get started. I'm going to here going to go here to my body. And I'm going to create a diff with a class of Pokemon. All right, and now I'm going to request that main JavaScript. So let's go ahead and do that. Main.js. There you go. All right, I'm going to save that. And here you can see we already have something. Um, and this is because the CSS. I have already some CSS um, for this Pokemon class. All right. So inside this, I'm going to add um, the image, the name, the weight, the height, and you can keep adding whatever you want. There is a lot of data. All right, so let's go to the JavaScript file. So first, I'm going to go back to the website so I can get some more information. So we have the URL, very important. And then my endpoint is going to be Pokemon and then the name or the ID of the Pokemon. I'm going to use the ID. And if you go to the data, you will see the ID somewhere here. So, for example, Pikachu is 25. All right. So I'm going to create an object. I'm going to do const. Um, I'm going to call it API data. You can call it whatever you want. It's going to be an object. All right. And now here we can add, for example, we need the URL. And the URL is going to be this one right here. So I'm just going to copy and paste it right there. Coma, uh, we need the type, which is this one right here, which is the Pokemon. You can change it. The API has a lot of different types. But for now, it's Pokemon. I'm just going to copy and paste it right here. Same thing. And then the ID of that Pokemon, which is going to be 25. That's all I need for now. You can go ahead and keep adding things or change the type, the ID. We're going to do it later so we can um, make sure that it, it works with different IDs and stuff like that. Now I need to build the URL so we can get the data. So we're going to name it. Um, API URL. Oops. API URL is going to be equal to, and I'm going to use backticks, and this is called template literal. This is um, JavaScript ES6. There's a link in the description of the video if you want to learn more about it. It's very, very cool. So, what we're going to do is build that URL. So, let's go ahead and say, because we're getting everything from this object, it's going to be API data dot url and then the next one's going to be api data dot type and then slash api same thing api data and i know i'm repeating myself a lot so we're going to fix this in a minute i'm going to show you another way that you can do this id 
All right. I think we have the URL, so I'm just going to console log to make sure that is correct and it's working. So API URL. I'm going to save that. Let's go to the page. I'm going to open the console. All right. And it seems like it looked correct. I'm going to click it. And here we go. We have all the data we need. We got the URL correct from all this up from this object. And now we have it ready. All right. So now that we have that, I'm going to show you something that we can do to make this, this more readable. So let's create a new const. And this is called deconstruction. So I'm going to do an object here, right? So I'm going to do URL type and ID equals to API data. So this is saying like the same thing we're doing here. So now if I do URL type an ID is going to do the same exact thing. It's just we're saying it's like we're saying URL API dot URL API dot type API dot ID. So it's the same thing. I'm going to put a link in the description if you don't want to learn more about this construction. And I think it helps. It's a lot more readable now. It's easy. So let's save it. Make sure it works. It seems like it works. Let's click it again. Yeah, and we have it. All right, cool. So now that we have this API URL, API URL correct, I'm just going to remove this and let's use fetch to get all that data. So I'm going to do fetch. And here we're going to do API URL. All right. And now after that's done, we're going to do dot then. Let's do some space there. And inside this, then we're going to do a function. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use arrow function, which is ES62. Again, another link in the description if you want to learn more about arrow functions. There's a lot of new things I'm doing here. This is modern JavaScript. I think it's very cool if you can learn it. So this is a function. Here you can see it's an arrow function. And what I'm going to do here inside here, I'm going to do data. It, it doesn't have to be data. It can be whatever name you want. And I'm going to return that data. But that data is going to be in JSON file because this is all JSON. So we do dot JSON. And we can actually test it. So let's do console.log. Let's save that. Let's go back here. All right. So it's working. So fetch will return a promise. A promise is another thing about ES6. It's actually very cool because it's holding that data for you for use in the future. So it's that data is right there. And then it's just waiting for you to use it. And we're going to use it in a minute. So here you can see there is an object here. And all my data is here. So let's go ahead and put another then, but let's remove the console log. All right, we are returning that data and we're going to do another then. And we're going to do the same thing, another function. And here, same thing, you can name it whatever you want. And I'm going to name it Pokemon because it's all the, that Pokemon data. And let's do another console log. So we can make sure it's working. Now, I want you to remember that there's a lot of things that you can use here to catch and to throw some errors just in case this is not working. You know, um, you can build, you can add some if statements inside here, but I want to keep it simple for now that you that way you can understand how fetch works and how easy it is to get some data. Um, actually, there is a typo here, it's then, all right. All right, let's save that. Let's see if it works. And here we go. Here we have all the data from that specific Pokemon, which you can see the name here. You can see the ID. Everything is in here. So that's what we want to add to our website, whatever we want. 
So I want to create a function that is going to run here. It's going to get the data and it's going to put it on our DOM. So let's go ahead down here and I'm going to create a new function. Const, I'm going to call it generate. I don't know, HTML, you can call it whatever you want. It's going to be equal to a arrow function. We're going to run a function. Inside here is going to be all, all our data. So it's going to, so Pokemon is going to end up being here and then we're going to do whatever we want to do with that. So let's go ahead and console log that data just to make sure this, it works. Let's do that. And now I'm going to use this function instead of console log, I'm going to do a function. So this function is going to be here, taking this, all this Pokemon data and it's doing this. So let's save it. And here we go. It's working because our function is just constantly logging that data. So it's working. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to keep that console log just in case. So let's create a template literal for a, our HTML. So let's do const. I'm going to name it HTML. Let's do backticks. And here we're going to do all the HTML. So let's start div. Let's do a class of name. This is the name of the Pokemon. Let's close it. And here is going to be data dot. And let's take a look at our object here. And, and it seems as it's just name. So it's data dot name. And let's do another diff. Actually, let's add the image here. Image source equals to, and it's going to be data dot. Let's take a look at where is the image. So it seems like there's a sprite sprites. Let's open that. And here you can see like a bunch of different images. Um, I'm going to be the front default. So let's copy that one. So it's going to be data sprites dot front default. All right. Yep. It seems like that's what it is. That's the image. Another div. Let's say this is like, I want to add the weight and the height of that Pokemon. So let's do class equal to details or whatever you want. And inside this div is going to be like the height and the weight. So let's do span height. And here we're going to do data dot. And let's look again. It seems like it's right there. The height is here and the weight is here. So it's going to be just like that height. Let's close that span. Then same thing again. I'm just going to copy and paste it right here. It's going to be the weight. And instead of height, it's going to be weight. All right. Now that we have this HTML ready, we have all this ready. I think it looks good. Let's go ahead and get the um, Pokemon div from our HTML. Here you can see just a class of Pokemon. So let's go ahead and get it const Pokemon. Let's call it Pokemon div equals to document query selector. It's right here. It's going to be Pokemon class right there. So we're getting that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do Pokemon diff dot inner HTML equals to equals to what equals to this HTML, all this right here. That's what we want. So it's going to be equal to HTML. And now we have this function generating all this HTML from us, getting all the data from the API and putting it inside that div. So let's see if that works. I'm going to save it. And there you go. We have the name, we have the image, the height, which I don't know if this is like centimeters, like, I don't know, maybe the documentation is going to tell you. 
and the weight is 60. I'm sure that's not pounds. It might be something else. But we got what we wanted. Perfect. We're getting data from that API. With this simple modern JavaScript code, you can see how simple you can get started. So now what I want to do, I want to change the ID and see if it works. So you can see here the ID 25, that's Pikachu. I'm going to change it to like, I don't know, 26, which is the next one. Let's save that. And there you go. It seems like a 26 is ratio, which is like the, like the next level or like the evolution or whatever it's called. Um, let's do like, uh, I don't know, 200. Save that. And there you go. We keep getting different um, names, images, and the Pokemon weight and height. Let's keep going to 300. I think there's a lot of new Pokemons out there. There you go which I don't know because I'm old school. I don't know those 400. Let's see if that exists. There you go. And it, you can keep going and going and going. So you can imagine like you can build like different filters and to find Pokemons or I don't know if you can build a game, whatever you want to do. But I just wanted to show you how simple it is to use a public API. It doesn't have to be Pokemon. It can be any API you can find out there and it's going to be kind of the same way. All right, that's it. Subscribe if you wanna keep learning and click on the bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.